It started in 2003 as an idea to affect change, and quickly grew to an annual affair with worldwide attention and participation. Microsoft's Imagine Cup invites students to dream big and gives them a platform to take an idea from concept to completion while building sought-after skills they'll be able to use throughout their careers. From Sydney to Sao Paulo and everywhere in between, the Imagine Cup shines a spotlight on groundbreaking new inventions and concepts, all using technology to create new business models, products, and solutions. And now, it's come to take its place on a larger scale at the preeminent event for developers, where inspiration meets information and collaboration. The perfect beginning to Microsoft Build. This is the Imagine Cup. Hello and welcome to the 2019 Imagine Cup World Championship. Uh, yes! Woo! Take it. I am Kate Yeager. He is Corporate Vice President of Microsoft Solutions, Corey Sanders, and we are incredibly excited to be your host live from Seattle, Washington, kicking off this year's Microsoft Build Conference. Thousands of developers from around the globe are here to talk about the latest tech and innovation, and we've got three team students who are ready to do the same. Now, these brilliant students have been on quite the journey leading up to the 17th Imagine Cup, where the competition finds a very fitting new home here at Microsoft Build. At Microsoft, our mission is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. And our community of developers are instrumental in helping us do just that. They take our latest tools and tech and find new ways to use them for the benefit of all of us. And I'm so excited that this year we have hundreds of student developers along for the ride at Microsoft Build. In addition to Imagine Cup, local students from Seattle schools are joining us. Plus, new this year, Build attendees were invited to bring their children along with them to explore and learn. In fact, we're standing right now in the student zone, which will be the hub for student learning and fun all week, where they can get hands-on with Minecraft, Make Code, Azure, Visual Studio, GitHub, and so much more. We really wanted this build to be about lifelong learning, and I look forward to what this, bring, this week brings for all developers, both budding and established. And I also can't wait to see what happens right now as our Imagine Cup finalists present their concepts. Build is all about making what's great, and it's the perfect home for the 17th annual Imagine Cup and our next generation of creators. Oh! Woo! All right. And let's not forget the spirit of healthy competition, which is what these students have engaged in for the last several months. The Imagine Cup journey began with 30,000 student competitors from 190 countries. From there, teams competed in three regional competitions, with the winner of each region taking home a cool $15,000, and of course, punching their ticket to today's championship. Quite the global journey, to be sure. Almost 30,000 collective miles traveled by our finalists on the way to the championship in Seattle which is appropriately dubbed Cloud City. Ah, too true, Core Town. Mm -hmm. And this time, Cloud City, well, it isn't just about rain. Further ado, let's meet our regional champs and take a look at their experience on the road to the championship. We are Team Finder. I'm Easy Glucose. We are Team Kali. It's been absolutely incredible. It's amazing to have the chance to come to Seattle and meet all these teams. Meeting people who are equally passionate about making impact has been a phenomenal experience. The feeling that I can help somebody to lead a better life is the motivation for me. The most exciting moment was the announcement. First place, and we were like, oh my god. <laughs> Winning would be so great because it would validate Easy Glucose. We hope to bring Finder to as many blind people as possible. We had an idea. We're going to make sure that it reaches to the people who need it. We imagine it comes to the grand stage for us to accomplish this. Dream it. Build, Build it. Live it. it. Ladies and gentlemen, here they are. Your Imagine Cup World Championship finalists. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations on making it this far. Now we'd like you to head backstage and get ready for your presentations. 
We'll see you in just a couple moments. Now it's time to meet the people who will decide this year's winner. In order to take home that famous trophy and a huge grand prize, our finalists must impress these highly qualified tech veterans. Let's meet our panel of esteemed judges. With an empty savings account and no idea where she'd be sleeping each night, Arlen Hamilton refused to give up her dream of closing the startup funding gap for people of color, women, and or LGBTQ+. Today, her backstage capital fund has invested over $5 million in 100 companies led by underrepresented founders. Throughout a lengthy career in coding, Amjad Masad has been driven by a dedication to make programming more accessible, from his college days, through stops at Yahoo, Facebook, and Code Academy, he continues working to lower entry barriers for developers as the founder and CEO of Replit. And she finds herself in the top 30 of Forbes' 100 most powerful women in the world. This week, she celebrates her sixth year as the chief financial officer for Microsoft. Amy Hood is responsible for Microsoft's worldwide finance organization, including acquisitions and investor relations. Please welcome our AAA panel, Amy Hood, Amjad Massad, and Arlen Hamilton. <laughs> Okie dokie here, folks. Now it is time to get started. Here is how it all goes down. Each team will have three minutes to pitch their ideas. Our judges will be scoring each presentation based on the solution's technology, innovation, feasibility, and concept. Our grand prize winner takes home $100,000, $50,000 in Azure credits, a mentorship with Microsoft Venture Fund 12, and a priceless mentoring session with the CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella. Now, time to get into these presentations. We had the chance to meet with each of these teams in preparation for today's big event. And here's a little preview of each team's project. First up, from India, here's a look at what Team Kylie has in store. We are Team Kylie from India. Kylie is a smart anti-pollution mask integrated with an automated drug nebulizer specifically designed for respiratory and asthmatic patients. The thing I love about Team Kylie is they've taken a problem of their community and they found a way to solve it. And the technology that they used, Azure Machine Learning and Cognitive Services, to be able to not only solve it for the individual, but they're taking the data and they're crowdsourcing it. This is such an amazing opportunity to, again, not only help those individuals, but help that entire community. Team Kylie, you have three minutes to wow our judges. That time begins now. Just over a year ago, wildfires in Seattle caused air pollution to rise temporarily to dangerous levels. But there are millions of people who are living in these environment conditions every day of their life, where they can't just even breathe clean air. Back in India, we have witnessed days when people were confined to their houses just because the air quality was too harmful. And I have seen my friend coughing blood due to prolonged exposure to air pollution. Now, according to World Health Organization, air pollution is the world's largest killer, with number of deaths more than that of AIDS, tuberculosis, and diabetes combined. And this inspired us to come up with a solution to help all of these people. Therefore, we introduce you to Kylie. Kylie is a solution to improve quality of life for people living in poor, poor air quality areas. Kylie is the most advanced anti-pollution mask ever built, with six-layer filters, and our centrifugal fan, it maintains flow of pure air, regardless of air pollution outside, and filtering even the most smallest and the dangerous 2.5 pm size particles. To ensure utmost comfort for all day use, we have also integrated Azure Cognitive Services to scan users' face structure and determine the best mask fitment for them, so that there are no any kind of design inefficiencies. For respiratory patients, we have worked together with several hospitals to bring you the world's smallest drug nebulizer, small enough to fit right into your palm. It can be easily connected to the Kylie mask, and so the patients can take medicines on the go whenever and anywhere they need it. Patients will also be able to schedule their medicine timings directly from the Kylie app so that they can get automatic drug delivery or haptic reminders. 
Kylie, using an inbuilt air quality sensor, will monitor air quality 24 by 7 and sends the data to the cloud for being accessed by everyone. Us users can then check air quality around their neighborhood or workplace. And Kylie, using machine learning, will also provide a comprehensive pollution forecast for next four days. Kylie users will be able to invoke their favorite virtual assistant in a single tap directly from the mask to make or attend calls and carry on with simple day-to-day -day tasks. In order to increase the popularity of an anti-pollution mask among masses, we have also introduced the idea of customizable grills. So children and adults can go for their favorite cartoon character. Users can get their hands on Kylie from direct online sales or from our partnered hospitals or pharmacies. And the Kylie's washed air quality data will be available available to third-party organization in the form of paid services. Users will be able to buy Kylie for as low as $19, while the nebulizer combo will be available at only $27. The Kylie customization pack can be opted for an extra $7 charge. Thank you, everyone. We are Team Kylie, and we want you to breathe freely. Fantastic job. What a great way to start. Judges, now we'd like to hear a few thoughts from you. So let's start. Arlen, go ahead. Hi. Yes, really, really good. Um, I love what you're doing. I just want to make sure you focus on one thing or, or a couple of things and do them really well. Um, and I, I think also the education that you'll have to um, make sure people understand exactly what the problem is first, and then they'll understand um, what your solution is. Because the virtual assistant thing, it's really cool, but I don't know if I need that. Um, if, I don't know why that was added, but please focus on the, the thing that you feel you're going to bring to market first. Right. Great. And then Amjad, what do you have to say? Uh, I would agree with that. I think uh, it's, uh, it's an awesome product. It's a very important, increasingly important issue. And so uh, I think you have a very uh, good core message that you need to focus on. And uh, I think the next challenge for you is to, uh, because a lot of people would need this product, you need to make it affordable and make sure to get, to get as many customers as possible so that people can benefit from it. But, uh, but a great job, and I look forward to see what, where you take this. Thank you, Amjad, and thank you, Team Kylie. Fantastic job. Really well done. Now over to you, Kate. Thank you very much, Corey, and a strong start to our championship. Let, let's keep things moving. Our second presentation of the day comes from Team Finder, winner, winner of the EMEA Regional. Here's a sneak peek at their solution. Introducing Finder, a quick and easy solution to find any object in your room. We're not using any tracking device, we just use a stereo camera. What's really exciting about Finder is they've taken a problem and really driven home how much more challenging it is for the visually impaired. They've solved it. They've come up with a solution that takes augmented reality to be able to determine where things are in space, artificial intelligence to be able to detect objects, and of course, bringing that together with cognitive services. It really is an amazing set of capabilities coming together for a real world problem. Now it's our turn to see this solution in person. Team Finder, you have three minutes on the clock. That time begins now. Hey, I'm Fernand from Team Finder. And I'm Sachit. Have you ever lost something like a key, wallet, or phone? I'm sure I have. Well, over the past couple of months, we've been working together with the UK's leading charity to find out more about this problem. John, one of our test users, has shared the following story with us. Once, he was looking for a book for three days straight and wasn't able to find it. How it turned out, the book was beside him the entire time. As I got a dyslexia myself, I regularly use speech-to-text software and other softwares to help me with my disability. Finder aims to do the same for people with visual abilities to empower them to become more independent to find lost objects. How our technology can help John. We utilize a custom-built 3D stereo camera to pinpoint every object in 3D space. Then we use Azure technologies such as spatial anchors, Cosmos DB and custom vision to power spatial intelligence. Then we use our custom built iOS application to navigate the user towards the object using an AI experience. We use haptic feedback and stereo audio to 
navigate the user towards the object. You can hear a, play, a fire noise in the background. When I get closer, it will get louder. I can use haptic engine to feed me towards the right position. Once I reach Your the target, Your backpack is directly ahead. There, I get a notification that the object is directly ahead. That way, I know I've reached my target and I can grab it easily. Our go-to-market is a partnership with the RNIB to install 1,000 cameras into people's homes within the next six months. We then want to install, the cameras will be sold at a 199 each with a monthly subscription fee, which can be offset by a grant from the British government to cover the cost of the system. Next, I want to introduce John, and let's see what he has to say about the app. So if you would have to describe the product in four words, what would you say? Um, I can describe it in two of you. Absolutely fantastic. So that was John. Um, so Finder really aims to do the same what speech to text software has done for me. Make me independent, make me have an independent life. That way, visually impaired people do not have to rely on caretakers, people's family to make them find, help them find their objects. We have Finder, say it. Fi hear it, find it. Woo. Awesome job, Finder, fantastic. All right, let's hear again from our judges. This time we'll start with Amja, go ahead. Um, I mean, I, I sure could use it. You know, the, the remote control that I lose every time <laughs> would be great to find it. But um, yeah, I, th I think it's an important problem. And the, you know, uh, the technology is pretty awesome. How you're using, how you're utilizing Azure to do uh, spatial and vision, that's really cool. Um, and I think it's an important problem. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm uh, excited to see where you take it. Thank you so much. Amy, what are your thoughts? I think what's interesting is when I think about accessibility and when you are able to build great solutions for users, yeah. it actually has very broad application yeah. as opposed to narrow. And I think this really brings that home for me and I think probably everybody's seeing this. So I really love the focus but actually, it's more expansive yeah. than maybe I initially I have a grandma thought. with uh, Alzheimer's, uh, and she loses things all the time. She hides them. She never finds them. And I'm definitely planning when I get back to Germany to install one of those cameras in her home to help her. Great. Great. Well, thank you so much, Finder. Thank, you, thank, you, so thank much. you so much. Kate, two amazing projects down. One left to go. Well, Corey, we are down to our final pitch of the events, and the excitement here at Microsoft Build is... Well, building. I did need that, thank you. Here's a quick look at what Team Easy Glucose from California has created. Easy Glucose makes blood glucose monitoring for diabetic patients painless, fast, and cheap by analyzing images of the eye. I love how Brian really brought it home and personal. He talked about the issues that his grandma has uh, and the pain and challenges of taking those pinpricks. To be able to take the technologies of virtual machines and SQL databases and to create a great experience that's very non-invasive, it truly is unbelievable. What's really impressed me about Brian is the fact that he's only 18 years old and he already has a patent pending for this technology. I can only imagine what it would be like to have a patent pending at this age. Time for our final team of the day. You've got three minutes on the clock. Start that clock now. Hi, I'm Brian, a freshman at UCLA. Diabetes is the fastest growing chronic disease, affecting over 400 million people worldwide. Because there's no cure for it, patients have to constantly monitor and measure their blood sugar levels up to 10 times per day. The problem is that it's done through these invasive finger stick tests which are not only painful and inefficient, but because a new test strip is required every single time, it's actually extremely expensive, costing patients thousands and the entire American health system $250 billion per year. I was personally drawn to this problem when I found out that my own grandmother was diagnosed with diabetes, and hearing about her difficulties inspired me to come up with Easy Glucose, which provides, for the first time ever, painless, cheap, and fast glucose monitoring on the go. How is this possible? Our blood glucose levels are actually highly correlated to our glucose levels in the eye. And by analyzing images 
of the eye, we can determine our glucose levels by looking at specific structures inside the iris. Patients first snap on this cheap lens adapter onto their smartphone cameras, and by holding it up to their face, they're able to capture high-quality images of their own eye. From here, Easy Glucose analyzes the image and returns the glucose reading in under a second at virtually no cost and without any of the pain, blood, or risk of infection of traditional methods. This is all through, done through an Azure deep learning framework that was built on top of virtual machines and SQL databases. And since everything is happening directly on the phone, there's no need for internet connection. With an error rate of 7%, against traditional methods, not only is Easy Glucose clinically accurate, but it also outperforms current non-invasive methods by over 30%. Our market strategy is to first focus on the half million diabetics inside the California Bay Area. To bring this to market, there's a patent pending for the deep learning framework, and the next step is to gather more data and clinically validate Easy Glucose through trials in collaboration with Stanford Medicine, and then obtain FDA approval. There's a one-time $10 cost for the lens adapter and a monthly subscription of $20 for unlimited tracking to bring in recurring revenue, but also saving patients thousands per year. Easy Glucose captures a new opportunity that has only been made available by recent advances in machine learning, faster smartphones, and better smartphone cameras. It's transforming the way glucose monitoring is done and I'm looking forward to the day where millions of diabetics, like my own grandmother, don't need to worry about these invasive finger stick tests to live freely with diabetes. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Woo. Well done, Easy Glucose. Well done. All right. This time we're going to start with Arlen. Let's hear what you had to think. Wow. So really love what you're doing here. It, it will be interesting to see what this is going to replace. Um, in the process and see how, how it uh, affects someone in the daily life having diabetes. Um, I just have to say in general, I'm very excited that the youth are, I'm very um, excited that you're gonna be working on this while I get old. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. And we'll close out here with Amy. I tell you what, I'm always inspired when people see an existing problem and solution and say, I have a completely different way of solving it that fundamentally helps both this nation and globally to address something that can't continue to exist, which is the high cost of healthcare. It's super inspiring. I love that it's focused and it really solves a very specific need. Great job. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Fantastic. Yeah, good luck to you. Absolutely. All right. Back over to you, Kate. Whew, all right, well, great way to end those presentations for sure. Now our judges are faced with the seemingly impossible task of deciding this year's winner. Now, while they decide the fate of our finalists, I understand we've got some special guests in the audience there, Corey. We do, we absolutely do. As luck would have it, we have last year's Imagine Cup Championship team here in the audience today. Let's hear it for them. Smart Arm. <laughs> Woo! Last year, Team Smart Arm from Canada impressed our judges with their low cost smart prosthetic arm, which I think he has here, that they developed. And due to their amazing innovation, they took home the Imagine Cup trophy. In fact, with the demo not even working, if memory serves. Nice. It works now. It works, it works now. now. You have okay, to bring that up. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. My bad. All right, please welcome Hamile and Samim here. Yes. Hey, thank you. So, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining. Hamile, give us an update on Smartum. I heard you met with the Prime Minister of Canada. Is that yeah. true? I mean, we are at Build, so he's no Satya, but he's a pretty cool that's, guy. That's a good line. <laughs> um, so we went up to him, and I was already practicing uh, doing my pitch to him. And then I get there, and he starts telling me about it, right? I'm like, come on, man, you're stealing my thunder. But he's a great guy. <laughs> ah, so he stole your thunder. All right, so you mentioned Satya. So, I mean, you, yeah. you had a mentoring session with Satya. How'd that go? Did he give you some good input? Yeah, it was very transformative. And I think we'll see with his keynote how much he really embodies the mission statement of wanting to empower every person and organization to do more. 
And I, I think it was really insightful because he gave us an idea that it is now kind of on the onus of us and our generation. And one of the judges was touching on that, that it's really on us to make sure we have that meaningful impact and create a sustainable, fu uh, sustainable future for the rest of the population. That's so. awesome. That's awesome. So I see you have the arm with you. This is the latest. This is the latest What are greatest. some of the changes? Because I remember it obviously a year ago. What are some of the changes that you've been able to make? Yeah. So we actually added a screen on the back. That's, oh, that's one of awesome. the biggest things. So whatever object you're picking up, it'll actually show you the object on the screen oh, that's live. Cool. Right. So you can confirm, you know, it's the, it's the right thing you're interacting with. Um, and we got some grippy inserts for the palm. Oh, it's cool. uh, just a better functional product. So it just grabs things better. That's yeah. awesome. That's, so what's next? I know you've got, like, what are the next ideas that you want to add to it? So I think the biggest thing is that, and we also kind of got these insights from Satya, is that you want to be making sure that you're building this closely alongside the actual users that it's designed for. Otherwise, how are you going to ensure that it's having the impact that we're promising? And so that was part of the reason why we kind of uh, use this material, because we realized that the objects were slipping out of the hands of the amputees. And so next steps is, again, just kind of continuing to iterate. It's yeah. all about the process about of working learning alongside. Growth. Exactly. Yeah. So you have a whole bunch of students here, very exciting environment. If there's one thing that you could tell these students, what would it be? You know, this is definitely the case with what I learned with SmartArm. Um, oftentimes, ideas don't come out fully formed. They only become more clear as you work on them. Mm -hmm. And so if you have an idea, if you have a project or any sort of passion in mind, just start somewhere and you'll figure it out along the way. And I think I really want to emphasize that it's all about the process. Whatever happens with the competition today, I hope you guys continue working on this. If this idea fails, focus on the next one. Just keep going. And you guys are all very talented, so I'm sure you'll come up with something cool. Fantastic. Well, thank you guys so much. Let's thank hear it for you. Team SmartArm coming back here. Thank you so much for joining us. And congratulations on the big win from last year. Really well done. To move forward as well and find out who will be the next Imagine Cup world champion. Our A-list judges, get it, have finished compiling scores for our three finalists. Amy, Amjad, and Arlen, a huge thank you again for being here today and for helping us out with the Imagine Cup. You guys had an inc incredibly important task, and you nailed it. There it is. There it is. All right. Are we ready? Yeah! Okay. So now we have this is the envelope. That is that the envelope. we're going to be using here. So great. all three finalists did a great job showing off their ideas, and now it's time to find out who will take home the title. Guys, a huge welcome back to you on stage. You did great. You got to be breathing a sigh of relief. All of your demos are done. Guys, let's how about a give them a round of applause. Round of applause. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. I hold here. I hold here in my hands the results of the 2019 Imagine Cup World Championship. And so we're going to get going here. In third place, Team Finder from the United Kingdom. Congratulations. Congratulations, and, and congratulations for making it this far, and thank you so much for being a part of this year's Imagine Cup. We're excited to see how your project progresses from here, so keep working on it. Absolutely. Now, third place also gets $30,000 in Azure grants. Not too shabby. Corey, then there were two. Indeed, there were. And no matter who is named champion, both teams are already winners. The runner-up in this year's Imagine Cup will take home $40,000 in Azure grants and Surface laptops, by the way, while first place wins $150,000 in cash in Ooh. Azure grants, mentoring with M12, and of course, that priceless mentoring session with Satya Nadella. Before we crown the champion, I want to make one last announcement. Microsoft is dedicated to empowering students to learn and grow, and hopefully considering careers in STEM through access to technology and resources. We thought one way to help in this endeavor, to continue to empower the next generation of technologists, is to provide a state-of-the-art device on which students can develop. So I'm thrilled to announce all of the students attending Build this year are going home with a brand new Surface Go. Exciting stuff, guys. Exciting stuff. So, let's keep it going and crown the champion, shall we? Okay. All right. Grab the uh, I'm cup grabbing there. the trophy, Corey. Let's go. And the winner of the 2019 Imagine Cup World Championship is Team Easy Glucose from the United States. <laughs> Woo! Second place, Team Kylie from India. Congratulations as well.
Fantastic, and congratulations for winning the title. Yeah. And that about does it for us, but stay tuned to the Vision Keynote coming up live in mere moments. Right now, enjoy this look at the highlights from today's Imagine Cup World Championship. And remember, dream it. Build it. Live it. All right, we are here with the winner. Let's give him a hand again, Brian from Easy Glucose. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. <laughs> so, uh, how did you come up with this idea? I know you had this story with your grandmother, but then there must have been some other realization. Right, so I started looking into how exactly glucose monitoring is done today, and reading a lot of these papers inspired me to see how exactly I could apply machine learning to this field, and that's how I came up with the idea behind Easy Glucose. Now, here's the thing. Everybody saw, like, the end product. Can you tell us a little bit about the work that went into it? Because I'm, I'm sure there was a lot of work, and we saw only the end product. Tell us about the blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah, so it was a lot of reading papers, reading about current methods, how exactly I can improve it. And in order to build the deep learning framework, I had to reach out to real diabetic patients, gather the data, and also work with actual professors to, you know, even further my findings. So tell us a little bit about, like, there's got to be a time where you're like, look, I do machine learning too, and sometimes it just doesn't work. Tell us about the hard time where you're like, I need to push through. There had to be a moment where you had to decide to do it. Yeah, so the first initial version of the deep learning framework didn't work that well. So eventually I expanded it to a multi-stage, a two-part actually process, and that ended up increasing the accuracy. But going from the first prototype version to the second one was definitely a lot of work and hope in my product. So was it like late night coding type stuff? Or tell, tell us about that, because we say a lot of work, and I'm like wondering, I mean, because one day I'm going to be obviously be the janitor in this huge building. And so tell us about the work. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of late night codings, kind of just racking your brain for ideas, you know, preparing your business plan and everything. Yep. So tell me about the process of Imagine Cups, because I feel like everyone that's watching just saw like the end product. There's probably like this really long phase. Tell us about that. Yeah, so it was about like six to nine months to actually develop the entire thing. And then I had to record a video, write a 10 page proposal to submit it for the initial part. And then when I came to the regional finals here in Seattle, I again had to do a three minute pitch, five minute demo, Q and A with all the judges, and then finally here today. So this dude is like 18 years old and has patent pendings. So hopefully one day, you know, when I need work, you'll, you'll let me come be your janitor or something, right? Yeah, for sure. So no, what are you gonna do with the $100,000 to advance your product? Buy a car. No, just kidding. <laughs> I'm gonna reinvest it into Easy Glucose and we're gonna do additional data collection and really clinical trials to make sure it's as accurate as possible. So I, I'm guessing that because it's a medical type thing, there's a lot of other hurdles that you need to jump through. Tell us about that. Right, so it's definitely just about you know, publishing the research, making, being very transparent with the results, and then obtaining an FDA approval so that we can actually get it to mar market, and then working with insurance companies to make it as accessible as possible. This guy, am I right? So how did you get involved in tech in general? What led you to this field? Yes, yeah, so I grew up in California, the Bay Area. A lot of people are doing kind of computer science fairs. In high school, I did a lot of kind of scientific research and science fairs, and that kind of led me to my interest in applying computer science to solve a lot of these healthcare problems. So that's amazing. Now, you were working by yourself the whole time, is that right? Yeah, I did the deep learning development by myself, but I definitely had the support of, you know, my parents, my friends, and also the professors that I'm working with. So tell us a little about the Azure. What are you doing with Azure to make this actually work? 
Yeah, exactly. Azure is incredibly critical to the success of this technology. And so in order to develop the deep learning framework, I had to get an Azure virtual machine with all these GPUs and the computational power to actually train it in the first place. And in order to ensure that it works offline, it needs to be synced periodically to the database in the back end. And I built that all with Azure SQL databases. Then the app is done with Azure mobile apps. And there's also automated alerts so that parents get notified if their children have dangerously low or high glucose levels. And that's all done through a web backend with Azure web apps. I don't know what I was doing when I was 18, but it wasn't. <laughs> I feel like it wasn't that. So that's awesome. So tell us a little bit about future looking. How are you going to invest this money? Are you going to get more people? What's going to go on? I mean, I mean, you could hire me. I mean, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, it's all about the first initial step is gathering more data, and we're going to be looking to find a lot of diabetic patients at the Stanford Medicine Hospital and then really gather their eye data. And from them, from there, develop more powerful models that generalize not only, I mean, generalize to specific demographics like your race or your age and so on and so forth. So how does it, like, look at your eye and just know from the, like, if you're looking at my eye, do people, do you see sugar in here? I mean, I don't understand how... Right, so essentially, Easy Glucose finds the most relevant structures inside your iris. They're like crisps, uh, furrows, and then ridges. And what the deep learning framework does is it analyzes a bunch of these eye image data, and it learns the most relevant features inside these eye images that are most predictive of your blood glucose level. So when you compare it to like the other methods, you said there was a huge improvement. Right. Like what are the other people doing that you thought, boy, this should be a lot better? Yes, yeah, so a lot of the other people are using these kind of bulky methods, attaching sensors to your ears or your wrists, and even those that have been doing it on the eye have required these large lab equipment that aren't portable at all. And so Easy Glucose is able to leverage kind of the technology that's now available today, you know, your faster smartphones, and this enables Easy Glucose to do everything, you know, in a very portable fashion that's very usable for diabetics patients every single day. Well, this has been amazing. Let's give him a really big hand. I, I love being able to talk to you about that. So I'm pretty excited to be here. Thanks so much for, for showing us this awesome technology. And one day, when he has this huge building, you might see me in there cleaning the toilets because I'm really good at that, actually. Well, hopefully everyone's excited to be here at Build as well. Uh, there are t There's tanning room only over here. You can go to Hall 6 ENF, or you can go upstairs to look at the actual stream that's going on right now. But I'm excited to say that Bill will start momentarily.